Hi, I'm Bob Warfield with CNC Cookbook, and this is part two of getting started with feeds and speeds in G-Wizard. In our first part, we talked about the best way to find feeds and speeds being to first get your optimal cut depth and cut width. We do that in G-Wizard using the CAD CAM wizards, and we walked you through that in the last video. In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit more CAD CAM wizards. Then I'm going to show you how to take those results from CAD CAM wizards and fine tune them in the feeds and speeds tab. So let's do it. So here we are once again in our CAD CAM wizards. We've got the CAD CAM tab selected and uh, we've picked our machine. I've got a Haas VF2 uh, 6061 aluminum. And we're going to cut a pocket, and I'm just going to leave the defaults here. It's going to be a quarter of an inch uh, deep, and the minimum corner radius inside the pocket is a quarter of an inch. And just as a reminder for those of you that are new to CNC, a pocket is any time uh, you're cutting down into the material, and it's going to be surrounded on all sides by material, right? And so just like in the first video, if I hit recalc, I get a result very quickly. Uh, telling me what it believes the optimal cut width and cut depth would be. Now, I want to show you something real quick. You've got some options here to get a little more control if you click the Option button. You can do things like change what kind of tool is being used, uh, force it to use a particular tool, uh, turn the finish pass on or off. But what I want to mess with here is uh, the roughing strategy. So a lot of different roughing strategies here. Uh, but the one I want to focus on is to use the same cutter with a high-speed machining tool pass. So that'd be like your volume mill and adaptive clearing type tool paths. Okay, so I select that and hit recalc again. And sure enough, our material removal rate goes up quite a bit. Those high-speed machine tool paths are great. Okay, let's now go over to the feeds and speeds tab and do a little refinement on this cut. If I double click copies all the information over here. I've got my tool. Everything's all filled out for me. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take you through uh, how to fill out all this information if you wanted to start from here. Um, I think it's better to start from CAD CAM Wizards just because, as I mentioned, so much is decided by your choice of cut depth and cut width. But, you know, if you're perhaps more of a traditional CNC machinist, maybe you prefer to just start from a straight up feeds and speeds calculator. That's fine, too. As in all of our software, we will encourage you to just go left to right and top to bottom uh, to use the tool, right? I mean, we're kind of trained to do that the way we read off, off a page. So you pick your machine, and we already did that. You pick your, your material. Uh, you pick the tool you want to use. And uh, uh, just to give you an idea, here's our tool menu. And so you'd pick basically the, the overall type of tool some tools have tip shapes. So for example, that's a normal end mill. I've got serrated roughers, ball nose end mills, lollipop cutters, uh, corner rounding, V-bits, dovetail, so on and so forth. Even these special cutters uh, that are used by the router guys. Okay, so you'd pick your tool. Uh, you'd tell it, okay, here's diameter and I can also fill out all those stats over here. I can put the diameter of the thing Here's your tool diameter, here's your helix angle, your shank diameter, here's your stick out. Stick out is important because the distance from that tool holder to the tip of your tool is going to determine to a degree tool deflection. And I'm going to give you a whole video about tool deflection, but for now just understand if that tool is flopping around too much, that's actually very bad for tool life. And so we're going to look to keep uh, tool deflection under control. Okay, so we come down, number of flutes in aluminum, I want to use three. What happens if I want to use four? Interesting. I, I just got a warning that popped up, use fewer than four flutes in aluminum. As a general rule of thumb, <laughs> you should do it that way. Aluminum makes great big chips, and they curl up, and if you have more than three flutes, you'll, you'll often jam the flutes of your cutter, and you'll break an end mill. So... She was just going to keep eyes peeled for that and, and try to tell you what not to do. The stick out is over here. Uh, here's an, an, an interesting row. 
Uh, it's, it's the manufacturer's information. As a beginner, I wouldn't do anything with this. Use GWizard's defaults. They're conservative and you'll, you'll be cutting that much faster with conservative feeds and speeds. If you're a professional and you are buying premium end mills, high quality end mills, you're paying more to get numbers that are higher here than GWizard's defaults, right? That's the whole point of the premium end mill is I can cut faster. Uh, than I otherwise could. So you may want to use the manufacturer's info uh, to do that. And again, I will give you a video that walks you through all the details of how to do that. For now, though, let's just ignore that row. Here's your cut depth and your cut width, uh, which we took from uh, CAD CAM Wizards. Uh, we're going to use an HSM toolpath. Remember, we specified that in the CAD CAM Wizards. So again, that's like your adaptive clearing or volume mill type tool paths. And the recommendation that comes out of all this is run it at 8,100 RPMs and a feed rate of about 125, 126 inches per minute. Uh, here's a useful piece of information. How do you want to enter the cut? You can plunge, helix, or ramp in, and this will be the feed rate to use in your CAM software depending on how you do the entry. So if I helix in, I can helix in quite a bit faster. Uh, if I ramp in uh, very fast as well. If I plunge, it has to slow way down. I I'm going to recommend uh, to everybody, uh, minimize your use of plunge. Never plunge an end mill unless you have to. It's the harshest way to get the end mill into the cut. And uh, particularly on tough materials like stainless steel, you can often chip that end mill with a plunge entry. So only if you absolutely have to plunge, use that method. I like Helix the best. It's the gentlest way to get the cutter in. It's the way to go. Okay, now we have tips. And uh, all kinds of interesting tips here. Here's one that's surprised a lot of CNCers. If you know about climb versus conventional milling, and again, I'll give you uh, some information in another video to walk you through that whole thing. You're used to uh, pretty much always climb milling as CNCers. That's kind of what we're taught. But it turns out that at a certain cut width, when you go above a certain number, it's actually better to use conventional milling for the tool. Again, I'll explain why later. Here's your tortoise hair slider. This lets you fine tune what's going on. I may want to be less aggressive on my roughing, or I may want more of a finish style cut. Um, I'm going to leave it at 100%, and you know, unless it's acting up on you, or unless you have reason to believe you need to go much slower than 100%, uh, just leave it at 100%. G Wizard again is going to give you reasonably conservative numbers. Okay. Now here's the detailed gauges, right? In your car, probably the speedometer and the gas gauge are the two most important gauges, but particularly sports cars give you a lot more information. Right? They'll tell you oil pressure and all of this sort of thing. In this case, we're going to get an idea over in this column, how close are we getting to the machine's limits? And you can see we've actually hit uh, the limit on RPM at 8,100 RPM. Uh, G Wizard wants us to go as fast as this particular machine will go. Now I can override that. Let's say I'm just kind of wondering, gosh, what if I had bought the 12,000 horsepower spindle and Sure enough, you see that uh, G Wizard would have used uh, about 9,800 RPMs, 9,900, instead of the, the limit it had. And you also see this little padlock. The padlock is showing you that you, you have overridden this number, and G Wizard is no longer able to calculate or use its old number. You don't really want too many of these padlocks showing. I, I try to get, get them all turned off unless I'm just exploring. Uh, different options. So let's turn it back off. Our machine only goes 8,100, so that's what we're going to be stuck doing. Um, out of curiosity, if you did wonder, let's go back to the 12,000 RPM. Uh, so that would have gotten us 17 and a half cubic inches a minute material removal rate versus 14. So options like a high speed spindle can pay for themselves pretty quickly if you're working in materials like aluminum that are soft and can go fast. Here is the actual chip load and surface speed that we're using in this cut. Okay, And if we look back up here to the defaults, you can see that the nature of the cut, the depth 
and the width has caused us to decide to slow down the RPMs, uh, but we're still taking uh, a reasonable chip load here. And the reason we can do that is uh, high-speed machining, right? If we turn off the high-speed machining, use a regular toolpath, we've got to slow things down uh, more than we had been, okay? Uh, a couple more numbers here for you. Tool deflection. Remember I mentioned too much deflection is bad for your tool life. And for example, if I had that, that tool sticking out two inches, um, the deflection goes up two and a half inches, you know, whatever it is. At three inches, I'm over the limit. That's hanging the tool out there too far. Uh, so you want to try to use as little uh, stick out as you possibly can to keep the deflection numbers uh, down low. And in this case, 8% is not a problem at all. Okay, a little more info. We talked about your material removal rate, how much machine horsepower this cut is using. This is a three, three horsepower cut. Uh, what's the torque on the tool is something people ask a lot of times, and you can get that value right there. Okay, so those are the basics about how to go through here and uh, fill out this form to get feeds and speeds. Now let's try a little bit of fine tuning. And what I want to do is refer you to the cheat sheet. Okay, this is a, a really cool feature that GWizard has where you come along and, and there's a column that's I want and then there's a change column. So if I want faster cuts and shorter cycle times, here are different things I might try to fine tune in GWizard. Okay. And it, it lists them kind of in the order you should try them in, in the more bigger impact, more important things first. Uh, let's say I want to emphasize uh, tool life over production speed. Maybe I'm uh, doing prototypes or I'm a hobbyist, or maybe I've got a big old titanium uh, aircraft part on there and I've already got a fortune invested in it. I'm near the end and I don't want to break a tool or have a problem right there at the end that forces me to scrap that part. So it's got three ideas for me to improve my tool life. I can uh, move my tortoise hair slider to the left. Okay, that's a really good idea. I can uh, just flat out reduce my RPMs. I just come over here and go, well, let's go 7,000 RPM instead. That'll help my tool life. Um, or I can play with the spindle percent adjustment on the machine profile. Now, just as a reminder, if I click the advanced button on the machine profile, I can come through and say, well, use 80% of my spindle speed or of the recommended feeds and speeds speed. Don't use 100%. And that will obviously increase my tool life. Okay. So the point of uh, the cheat sheet is to help you figure out uh, what you need to do to get different results. Okay. I want a better surface finish. Move that tortoise hair slider to the left. You'll get a better finish. Um, I want a faster feed rate or I want a slower feed rate. Uh, here's this RPM limit. This will come out a lot, for example, on a uh, CNC router. They have uh, uh, really fast um, uh, upper end, but they also have a pretty fast lower end. And that can be kind of problematic. So like if I pick the... Uh, Shape Oco, my lower end limit here is 16,000 RPM. What if I'm cutting a material, and I'm just going to do this for the sake of argument so I can show you how to use the, the cheat sheet. Let's say I'm getting into some steel. Okay, well, it looks like I'm still okay on that. Let's get into some more of a uh, uh, alloy. Oh, see, now I've got a problem. Not enough spindle powers available to do that, right? So I need to somehow reduce the power uh, that's needed, right? So that I can uh, take advantage of this. So if I come in here and I poke around, less power required, it says reduce spindle power limit or use a spindle curve or use a smaller tool. Well, let's use a smaller tool. That's going to slow things down right away. Okay, and lo and behold, the power limit is no longer a problem if I'm using a smaller tool. So the cheat sheet can guide you through uh, what variables to change to accomplish most anything you might want to do when you're fine tuning uh, uh, the feeds and speeds that you've got. Okay.
Thanks for listening. I'll be back at you with another video soon.